Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode number 111. This episode, this is how successful the award-winning podcast of the Eavesdrop podcast has become. This episode is brought to you by Upstart, Purple Mattress, Express VPN, and Burrow. That's four sponsors, man. I feel like, like Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan has like 18 at the beginning of every single one of his podcasts. Sometimes you see it in, on, on YouTube, sometimes you don't. It depends on how they structure the deal to where he may ne not necessarily need to say it on video, but he will have to say it on that. I don't know how it works. Um, Dalton Schultz, super, on, super, man. super tight end. Super. The super <laughs> tight end. Uh, Dallas Cowboys. You were up. here uh, at the beginning of the Hex Quarters. I was, yeah. Like, what did you see at the beginning? Like, what what has changed since the last time you were here? Well, I mean, you guys obviously got a lot more stuff in here. Yeah. Um, I think I saw it when it was pretty bare bones. Yep. Um, but, yeah, dude, I mean, that was three years ago at this point. So, I mean, it, I mean, a lot's changed. Yeah, so, so, so Dalton, a big gamer. Uh, I don't know how we got connected, but we got connected. You came out to check out the spot. We hung out for a little bit. And on the way out, I'm like, yo, maybe one day you'll come on the podcast. And you're like, yeah, hell yeah, I'd love to. And then COVID happens. And then, you know, all the other bullshit happens. Life gets in the way. And here you are three years later, finally. Uh, because we didn't even start the podcast, right? Like right away, Matt, or, or we did? Yeah. It took a little bit, right? It wasn't something that immediately we we knew that we were going to do a podcast, but we didn't know how long it was going to mm -hmm. take to get up and running. And uh, and it took a while, but now that we're here, we are here. Um, I'm only going to ask you this question because I just came across this. Um, on I have my laptop open, which is one of the main reasons why I often don't have Twitter open. But I don't want to talk about it, says my friend Justra. But right now, he says you've, you've paper handed a total of uh 551.53 ethereum right now that's worth two million two hundred fifty oh, i'm sorry two million two hundred fifty four thousand are you into uh, like nfts the, and crypto and all that so i see the uh i see the like the, the kind of lower yeah the appeal of like doing stuff like that um i see where it's going um personally like i'm not super bad dude i invested into doge yeah literally like three days before the snl skit yeah <laughs> i got i got torched yeah matt saying yeah, i got absolutely too. torched you did um that's the only uh like crypto story crypto that i that i have i've been like kind of trying to steer clear of it but yeah now nah, dude um a lot of the guys on the team are into the stuff like that yeah and i, I can see why yeah um, I, th I just think it's, it's a little volatile right now um and i don't I don't have a ton of capital to like <laughs> yeah. do that kind of stuff Not yet. yet. Not yet. After this year, boy, well, I hope I mean, you we'll get the see. Superman. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what. I I think that that's the one thing that I'm not doing right now that I should be paying attention to. Same. I have a really good instinct. My gut instinct is fucking phenomenal. I put it up against anybody in the world. It's just that good. And my gut right now is telling me that I should be playing in that in the field. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know necessarily how and i'm still waiting for the the world to sort of tell me where or how i'm going to do it uh but i i do think that there's there's a there's a place for me to play in in this in this space i just don't know how i fit in and i usually play my 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 role that way right uh mm -hmm. you know the stepping into the cannabis industry wasn't necessarily something that that it it, it just came to me one day because i was going to in in my attempt to try to get optic back um some way somehow right um or, or or try to remarry the brand somehow i figured that searching for different verticals or opportunities to make enough money to buy it back from whoever it was at the time um was a thing and then i saw this headline on on cannabis and how it was big and originally i was going to do a tequila company Mm -hmm. um, Nate Shot Courage and I were talking about it at one point. Oh, like and, the Rocks, yeah. Yeah, the, the Rocks, right? Tanamera, yeah. I think it's called. Terramana. Terramana. Uh, and then, you know, in that same sense. And then Josefu, a guy that, that worked here, said to me, you should do a hot sauce, like a like a hot sauce, like a, yeah. you know, whatever. And I'm like, I'm like, oh my God, that makes like so much sense. I love tacos. I love grilling. Like there's, there's a, there's something more that I can share. For me, it's you about, always, yeah, you always know the sauces in the back of the restaurant that yeah. nobody knows about. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Macero, the, uh, yeah, the smoked. Uh, oh, I told you, right? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. So, 
every time somebody asks me where I should, he, you ask me like what a, a, a good where do I, where should Mexican I go? restaurant that I recommended. Yeah. I said Macero, but I also remember saying, but make sure that you ask for the specific molcajete salsa, salsa from yeah. the back. It's a spicy one. It's whatever. So that's where I was gonna go and do right. Anyway, my gut feeling led me to cannabis because of of whatever. Uh, had a successful launch. Uh, but as we launched this thing, or as we were in the middle of it, optic sort of came into my back into into my world, or the opportunity to get optic back, and mm-hmm. I and I hopped at the decision like right away. Obviously, it's like, as it's, you should, I love it. Right, yeah. it's, it's my life's passion. I tell you what, though, operating operating optic the way that I've been operating by myself in the last couple of years. Um, or since I, I I got it back, like uh, actually what 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 the last three years have taught me is that I made the right decision in in trying to get help to operate optic right selling it at the time, um, whatever happened happened, whatever that's neither here or there. The fact is is that I now know that I did the right thing back then of 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 sort of trying to get help or get help for optic so whatever happened is in the history doesn't have doesn't have doesn't have anything to do with the fact that I made the right decision for me and my family um but here I am happiest ever me married back to my brand you told me when you walked in you haven't <laughs> seen me good. since yeah uh and again it's uh it's, it's one of those things where you you destiny happens no doubt, dude. Destiny. And, I mean, happens. I mean, kudos to you for like reaching that point too, um, where you have to like, where you feel like you need to go out and get help to mm-hmm. do something like that. I mean, that obviously tells you your brand is at a certain level that obviously supersedes your your abilities to um, do it all yourself. And I think you know, coming from the Cowboys organization, like, I mean, that's the biggest you know sports franchise in the world. Yep. And I mean, I can imagine. Shout like, out Jerry Jones. Yeah, I mean, one person doing that is ridiculous. So it's like. Obviously, yeah. that's a little different scale. Yeah. Um, but I don't think it's too far off. You keep I, I, building this the same way. I mean, you talk about esports brands. I mean, Optic has always been at the forefront. Yeah. Um, everybody knows Optic. Everybody knows who that is. Um, and so I think you keep going. I mean, the sky's the limit, man. I'm yeah, just happy you, you got it back. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. So am I. The, the thing. The thing with that is, is that back in 2017, call it June, because I sold at the end of 2017. But call it June 2017, we were in. In Counter Strike, we were in uh, Gears of War, Call of Duty, obviously Halo. Mm-hmm. Like we were in fucking esports, and it was just me and Hitch. Well, Hitch on the production side, mm-hmm. me on the business side, and we were able to operate. How many t- how many players was that at the time that I had under just me, not including all of the personalities? You know what I mean? So right. back then, like I don't know how I did it. I, I I I was better back then. Maybe I was, and and Nature and I talk about this all the time. How like times have changed, and it doesn't seem as though it has, but it has, right? Like I I I cannot tell you how I was able to operate Optic by myself for ten years. Mm-hmm. I cannot tell you. I cannot for the life of me as I sit here today, trying to think about how my life was before Paige came in and started solving everything or before Matt came in and started editing everything and, and, and Roger and all of these people that we have, mm. like it's crazy to me. And not and from a business standpoint, nothing changed, right? Money came in and money went out. Money came in, money came out, went out. Uh, I cannot tell you how. Operating the house, operating the, you know what I mean? Like I cannot fucking tell you how I figured it out back then, it's but I did. A, it's also an industry where it's like, very different from traditional sports like industries where it's like the cowboys are i mean they're football only you know what i mean so an esports organization can expand into you know however many games or um whatever they they want to get yeah. into so i mean it's like the scale can be whatever you make of it um so i think it's a it's a very interesting like comparison just to see what people do and like maybe the thought process of you know what game should i get into should we expand a team here? Does it make yeah. sense to go here? I mean, um, that's all I've always thought about like the business side yeah. of that of that stuff because yeah. I'm like, well, how do you how do you make that work? You know what I mean? Like, there's no there's no model of like, hey, this is how a this is exactly how an esports organization should be run. This mm-hmm. is how you should run a team, and it's very different from you know the other models of, of sports around the world. Yeah. Um, so I 
I don't know. I'm super interested in that. Well, I, th- I think, think your brain about it later. Maybe I, I'll. <laughs> I think I think there is a model, right? Yeah. The optic model works, right? Like I mean, if you if you look at where we started, how we started, if you look at what uh, you know Nate has been able to accomplish. Mm-hmm. And it, by no means am I ever taking credit for any of the things that, that they, you know, that, because only two organizations have been able to execute as well as we have. And that's 100 Thieves, that's Face Clan. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I, th- I think other others are starting to, like, sort of come up. And that that's not to say that my model is the only one, right? Because if you look at Cloud9, TSM, like, those are massive, massive organizations mm-hmm. that didn't necessarily follow the, the, the path of content the way that we did. Uh, if you look at G2, uh, like, same thing. Like, they have a very rabid fan base that's really, really good, right? Uh, they have a good good face behind their brand in, in Carlos. And, and you know, he's, he's this, like, big personality um, that, that's good for that brand. So uh, the, I know that my model works because it's been implemented in gaming. It's been implemented in, in outdoors, right? Uh, like oh, a bunch of times, right? It's like, so the model does exist and it's there. The only reason that I always make, make it a point to make sure that people know that I'm not taking credit for any uh, uh, anybody else's success that's used the model is because everybody knows the model, right? Every organization in the world can look at what we've done in the last 10 years. It's on fucking video. It's on YouTube. It's accessible to anyone. And they haven't implemented it. Or they try to implement it, but they failed. There's only a few that have been able to really execute well on that. Um, but it works, man. If if Pine Park works, that means that the model that we created, the optic model has worked three times in gaming, for sure. Once in the outdoor world with Guggen. Once, uh, right now, it's currently popping off. Like, the good, good... To me, the good, good brand, the good, good golf guys are like the, the, the epitome of... Everybody should have eyes on them because they're about to change the golf game forever. The way that the way that Guggen changed fishing forever, the good good guys are going to shape uh, shape and reshape golfing forever. Um, obviously, fishing you had the Van Dams and you don't have the Tiger Woods, right? Like this is a separate, different industry. But the way that they are approaching it, following a specific model and having this sort of big characters come together mm-hmm. under one brand to build something big. Like all eyes should be on them right now because what they're doing is 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 revolutionary for golf, um, and you sort of you, you sort of see it you, you sort of see it happen, and you're paying attention to it. But you blink you blink once, and next year you're in a completely different brand that is just going to be you know incredible. So if I'm able to execute what I know how to execute in Pine Park in my cannabis industry, that that means that my model has worked a bunch of times, and no at at, at no point is is it luck you know what i mean which is what a lot of people as always says lucky first more red vanish you were here in the beginning etc yeah. um easy and, to, easy to say that in hindsight yeah when you're yeah. not not in that situation making all the decisions right? yeah yeah so I'm, I'm i'm very excited for for that like i think i think i think optic is is a once in a lifetime brand i think uh you know face is definitely a once in a lifetime brand i think guggen is a once in a lifetime brand uh just just because of what it is and, and, and what field it's in. And I think that Good Good and Pine Park are headed like in that same direction, um, hopefully. So, you know, if if, uh, if we're able to execute well on everything that we have, I think that, the, you know, the sky's the limit for, for those boys, you know? So I'm excited about that. Yeah, I recently got into like all the Google and stuff and all the videos. That was probably like a two year thing. Yeah. Like two years ago, I was like, you know what? I should just pick up fishing. Mm-hmm. So I started watching a lot of like John B. And yeah. like, Dude, me and my me and my buddy who's been living with me since COVID. Dude, yeah. we went like all out <laughs> on yeah. fishing on stuff. Fishing you know stuff. what I mean? Yeah, if you um, ever want to go, like the Googans are always welcoming. We have so fun. many spots to go. Uh, See that that's what I need more than anything. Spots. I need, I need spots, man. Yeah. Like we've I mean, we've dried up the <laughs> everything around <laughs> everything in a in like a fifteen mile radius yeah. of where we're at. Well, I mean, what's your schedule like? Obviously, like, let, let's start from the beginning. I, I we went on a little bit of a tangent there, <laughs> just having catching up as friends, uh, and not really uh, podcasty, if if I if I do say so, uh, who are you, right? Who are you today, and where where did your story begin? Yeah, man. Um, so I'm first and foremost. Um, I'm a husband. Um, I'm a father of two. We just had our baby girl in Congrats. February. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Um, currently, I'm a tight end for the Dallas Cowboys, um, and I wouldn't I wouldn't include that if I didn't feel like football is is a part of who I am. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's kind of just a testament to the sport that's just kind of made me, uh, it's, it's had a very positive influence on who I am today and I've learned a lot through it. Um, and then, you know, last and lastly, I'm probably just a gamer, dude. Like, mm-hmm. I love gaming. Um, I've been, ga- been gaming all my life. Yeah. I feel like 
my generation, maybe the generation a couple years ahead of me was like the first to grow up with games and with it being kind of a normality. Yeah. Um, kind of like right on the cusp of, you know, the 2000s era Gen Z kids. So yeah, it's yeah. like nowadays kids are growing up with that. At, I mean, my son's three years old and he's got a tablet that yeah. he games on all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's a, it's becoming a, a lot more of a, of a mainstream thing. And so I, I feel like I was the, you're 25, 25, mm -hmm. yeah, 25 years old. Um, started playing football when I was eight. Um, and yeah, dude, that's, it's led me here. So I'm you, doing something you, right. You <laughs> went to Stanford. Stanford you, grad. You, yep. you uh, Stanford grad. Yep. Uh, you, you, you left that out. Obviously, super, <laughs> su super impressive dude, I school. Was, I was doing my finals, my last set of classes. I started to take two classes in the spring, mm -hmm. my rookie year. Um, so I was like learning my playbook, learning a whole new offense, you know, drowning in what is the NFL. Um and then trying to figure out and finish like so they, papers so, and finals. So they give you like a like a like a trapper keeper of sorts with all the plays and uh, a book a book so of they, plays. They, like, they used to. That's uh -huh. kind of like the traditional thing back in the day before they had iPads. And well, everything. I guess they give you a PDF now, right? Yeah, what the fuck so, am I talking it's about? All iPads, man. You know this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You Get your laptop. Yeah, no. So fucking. So, but yeah. So they they just give you an iPad. It's got all the. Uh, it's got all the plays in it and everything. They, they update it week to week. And your X's or O's, and then you just know your position and then you got to learn it? Well, it's like your first couple of years, it's like, okay, what am I doing? Yeah. And then as the years goes on, it's like, okay, what is the guy next to me doing? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so I have I learned that from from 82. Um, Jason Witten, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, was a, he was big on, on really understanding like what everybody around him has, how the quarterback sees the offense and um, – just taking his knowledge to the next level and then understanding what the defense is doing too. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, I mean, you could take it as deep as you want to go. Yeah. Um, I mean, some guys are out there. I mean, I know, you know, second contract guys that are basically, Hey, I know my job and I'm going to do my job. Yeah. yeah, like, yeah. And, and as simple as that, if you want to keep it that simple, absolutely yeah. dude, go ball, yeah, yeah, go yeah. do your thing. But I mean, um, you know, there's some guys that definitely take it to the next level for sure of like understanding what everybody's got. And that's you. I'm, I'm trying to You're be trying. that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I mean, you can obviously learn as much as you want to on that and continue to do that throughout your career. Yeah. Um, so I think that's where I'm trying to take my game. Um, and I think that kind of leads to the improvement over the years and the steady improvement, yeah. which is what I'm trying to do. You played high school football, obviously. Yep, high school football. Played yeah. since I was eight. Yep. Did you, like, what was it like? I mean, obviously, you know, being on the football team in high school it has to be super cool. But being as good as you are, somebody drafted, like, did you know early on that you could go pro? <sighs> Dude, I didn't even know that they gave college scholarships okay. for like football. So I was a, uh, you know, I was just playing through Little League, having a good time with my friends, like as a way to stay in shape. You know, I'd keep active. Um, like I said, I was kind of, a, I was a chubby kid. I'm, look, up. I'm shaking my head as if I, know, <laughs> but I, I don't know what it, what it, what you Dude, mean by staying active. I, I was, I was a chubby kid growing up. Um, so I, I, that was just because I gamed. That was yeah. all I did. I came home, grinded Modern Warfare to try to get ten prestige, like. I didn't really do much. And so yeah. I like football was my way of getting out, staying active, hanging out with friends. And my parents were obviously all for that. Yeah. 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 Um, so I think, uh, yeah, as, as the years goes on, um, you know, you get into that, kind of that high school environment, you, you kind of have an inkling of like, okay, like I'm, I'm, yeah. do, I'm doing all right. Like I'm doing well. Um, I played some varsity as a sophomore and like, that was kind of a big accomplishment. Of course. But I mean, um, you don't really think of that. And I, my sophomore year after our i think it was our first or second game the university of utah called me up and like was like hey man like you're doing really well we want to offer you a full ride scholarship Fuck. and i was like oh huh, that's like pretty sweet i i did i'm an idiot <laughs> so like i didn't know what you're that meant I, dude i did not know what that meant i was yeah. like oh cool like free, what does that free, mean? free yeah. college yeah, yeah, but yeah, like yeah. what is that so i called my mom and my mom just started bawling mm -hmm. like crying yeah and then I made, that made me emotional. I'm like, yeah. oh, I guess it's like it's pretty, a good thing. pretty big deal. Yeah. Um, so I think as the years go on, I kind of lucked into a lot of the uh, the opportunities that I had. Um, and I, you, you obviously have to be hardworking in order to be lucky. Um, I kind of put my head down and grinded for a lot of years. I got great grades in the classroom. Um, I made sure I was always on time for everything, always doing my schoolwork, um, obviously putting the work in on the field. Um, and I just kind of had opportunity after opportunity that I just kind of ta was taking advantage of. Yeah. Um, obviously went to went to Stanford, pretty good school. Um, got the opportunity to play with a lot of really good guys, um, and then had a 
decent enough college career where I got the opportunity to play in the NFL. And yeah, um, that's what life is, dude. Taking advantage of those opportunities. You never yeah. know. You never know when those are going to come up again. Um, you never know when they're going to be presented. <laughs> um, and you just got to be ready to pounce on them. Let me let me ask you this. Obviously, through through college and then going through this, um, <clears throat> is there is there a, a a process that people like all your other teammates, right, <clears throat> that were trying to go pro that ended up not going pro, right? Because it's not not everybody makes it to the NFL. It's like fucking mega hard. Um, how do you how do you like sort of separate yourself from everybody else around you that's trying to do the same thing that you're doing because athleticism can only get you so far right like it's about no the doubt. and 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 this is something that I've learned from Scump and Matt Formal who always talk about mm -hmm. it like everybody is as good as everybody else it's the in-game decision making and knowledge of the game that truly separates the pros from the well, you know, pros especially at this level yeah like at the NFL level absolutely like agree with that 1000 percent. everybody's good everybody's athletic you're yeah. not going against the guy that's like no not good that's why they're here yeah um i mean even the p squad guys you know people on twitter talk talk their shit about whoever mm -hmm. they want but like literally everybody in the league is good enough to be here mm -hmm. obviously mm -hmm. um so yeah that is a separator you you, you mentioned twitter and you, you just posted a, a, a story about, <laughs> let me see IG. if I, let me, yeah, let me, read it, let me read it in a screenshot so Matt can have, I mean, hopefully it's still there. I don't know if it is. It was, uh, it was may, may have been like two days ago or something. Yeah, it was right after the game. Uh, there it is. Uh, oh, it's not there. But some kid said something <laughs> fucked up to you. We'll right? say we'll save him. We'll yeah, we'll, <laughs> so we'll save him. Some little kid just gets on there. He's like, "You should have made this different player. You should have dove with the one yard line. Yeah, you should have scored. Dove, yeah, yeah. And on some dweeb ass shit because he his fantasy thing, his fantasy team. I mean, well, first of all, thank you for picking him, right? Like, it's it's, <laughs> it's it's good that that he at least you know respects your game enough to have you on there. But when you you know when some when the game happens, and it's got to be tough for you because it's not like it's basketball, right? It's not basketball where you can just take a shot or a layup whenever the fuck you want. It's you being a part of a program that you don't often have control of, right? Somebody is a coach. Calls a play, the the quarterback either agrees, disagrees, and then a play happens. And if they include you in that play, awesome. If they include you, include you or whatever, like that's awesome. Well, it's like also it could be like you know a play drawn up for you and they run a different coverage. Yeah, that's like exactly. it's just it's just not your ball. Yeah, like just yeah, relax. Like you know See, what I mean. I, I don't. I didn't even think about that. Well, then there's the teams that double cover certain players. Um, I mean, that's honestly like why I'm having the year that I'm having is yeah. because teams are literally out there going, okay, we're not letting Amari Cooper. Like, uh -huh. get yeah. the ball yeah we're not letting cd touch the ball yeah yeah, yeah. and like so it's like i'm single coverage like yeah. most of the game yeah yeah, yeah. it's awesome yeah how many touchdowns um, this year uh three just three? three yeah that's sick man i uh, saw i was I, I was at the which cowboys game we uh the eagles one the game. yeah that was a good game yeah so really good game, good game. To come to huh? we're like yo <laughs> huh? what's that it was a good game for you yeah, to come yeah, to. Yeah, it was. Hell yeah. yeah. Um, it was the first time the wife went to any football game ever. Right? We're, we're Chicagoans, and mm -hmm. I, as a Chicago Bears fan, I've only went to go see them once play. That's it? That's it, once in my I know you entire... talked about that a lot, dude. You need to go to more like, yeah, sporting I, events. Bro, you know what it is? It's like, I'm tired, man. I, it's <laughs> 7 o'clock comes. Matt, am I wrong? Like, it's true. And it's hey, dude, not, you got, it, hey, long days. All right. No, it's not even long days. It's just, and I, and I said it on the last podcast. When I was twenty, when I became twenty-one years old, let's just not even talk about my partying days before being twenty-one. Okay, <laughs> let's not even fucking put that yeah, on. Me there. neither, bro. Let, let's say, <laughs> let, <laughs> well, let's say t from the time I was twenty-one to twenty-nine, I hung out with my friends, right? And I did all of my twenties, and then I came into the gaming industry, and then and then Hastro Fuiz, uh, and all my other friends from like the early Machinima days, they mm -hmm. all became twenty-one. So I partied with their twenty-one also right and then they become adults or whatever but then here i am here come my players the scumpies the nade shots that the you know that, that are younger that become 21 so now i have to do their 21s i drew the line right there i said this is the last group of people that i'm gonna party with one i'm 40 years old i don't want to be the 41 year, year old dude at the 40 bar something. Yeah. yeah the 40 something year old phenom at the bar right i don't want to be that dude not that it matters to me like i don't give a shit i'm i'm, I'm gonna have a good time it's a mindset man. yeah <laughs> but i just i just can't do it so when when seth said let's go to the game it was a night game right it was it was if it's a 12 o'clock game i'm home by six i'm good i'm good for it you know what i mean yeah but if it's anything past like nine o'clock, I struggle. Concerts, I struggle. Like I just don't want to do that anymore. Dude, those late games will get you too. Yeah, I just well for for you guys specifically. Well, right? For us, I mean, we'll play a late game on like say we go like at New York. 
Um, we're playing the Giants at New York at yeah. like 7.15 kickoff. Yeah. Or I think it's 8.15 Eastern. Yeah. So it's like, dude, the game is at least three hours. Yeah. And then you have at least two hours before the really the plane leaves. And then you have whatever that flight is back, dude. I mean, we're getting back at like 5.30, 6 a.m. Yeah. So like you want to talk about late get, yeah. late nights, like, dude, those Tell, tell me about tra- tra- travel. And I, obviously, I don't know, for safety reasons, if you can't discuss, you can't discuss. How do you guys travel? Like, is it a private plane? So it's, it's definitely it, not the cop. It's not, it's not a private plane. Yeah. Um, we technically, I think it's a charter. So like we rent out like a whole plane. The whole American Airlines, yes, whatever. Exactly. Got it, got it, got so it. So they have a certain spot on the tarmac for us. We pull up. Still got to go through like TSA. Random guys get screened. Really? Uh, yeah. Is it TSA through regular people, TSA? No, or is it just no like, it's like they have like a little, entrance? They have like a little shed that That's awesome. you walk through. So it's it's pretty sweet though. Like, I mean, we'll, we'll be getting back at whatever time at night. And I mean, that's kind of crazy because you have all these guys with obviously a bunch of money and like these crazy cars. That yeah, just, yeah. And so like if you catch the, the highway at the right time, yeah. you're going to see like Ferrari, hundreds of cars that are yeah, just Lambos. like, yes. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's cool. So it's a, it's a, it's a sight to see for sure. Yeah. That's, that's cool. Yeah. I, I always wondered, cause I know obviously like, uh, you know, fly, flying private is one thing. I know the Rangers have a, a, a private plane, but it's, mm-hmm. I don't know. I think it's just ownership. Yeah. Maybe? Basketball, basketball takes like their own private planes yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's different than other sports. Cause you just have so many, we so travel many f- with like all, how of many our, people? all of our coaches. Um, we travel with a bunch of like the media members, like our own writers yeah. and stuff. Um, I think there's at some point like family, but it's like, we have our whole PR department. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so it's, there's, dude, there's a lot of bodies. It's like the, it's, what is it? It's not a seven. I don't, I don't want to say it's a 787. Oh, it's a, but it's like, one. but it's one of the planes where it's got, you know, the two seats on the outside and then a row of four. Okay. In the okay. 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 And yeah. it's all the way back. And what about the, the who who rides, who gets to ride first class in those? Uh, so my first two years, yeah. it was like. The coaches and the most senior players, so like your your Zach Martins, your Tyron Smiths, um, Zeke Dak, obviously up there. Yeah. Um, so it's like those types of Tyron Crawford he yeah, was yeah. up in the front. Yeah. Um, so it's like those those players were up there, and when we had the new staff come in, it's I guess just coaches. So yeah. Everybody's in the back of the plane. How though? You guys are big dudes, man. Well, it's like if you have the two seats on the side or the three seats on the side. Yeah. Um, then it's like you get your own. Row. There's only one guy to those yeah, rows, yeah, yeah. and there's two. There's two guys at the ends of the middle rows. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, there's there's enough room. Okay. Um, but even like the distance in between, like where you're sitting and your knees, has to be. Yeah, dude, if, you're if, six, I'm, if you're I'm six sitting five. on the yeah, if I'm sitting on the side, I'm laying down on the full row, like no question. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's not it's not that bad. It's it's, the, it's, no, it's, 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 it's there's nice. worse things to complain about. Yeah. I'm sure. Plus, it's like everybody on the team, especially this year, is like super close, like oh, awesome. super tight. Everybody yeah, yeah. hangs out. Um. So like. Dude, imagine if you and like all your friends are in the back of the plane yeah, yeah. with nobody else. Like, it's if it's I'm fun. back and or, or Zeke, fun. I feel left out. You know, I'm it's, going back there to yeah. you know, yeah, you know throw I mean? some bones. <laughs> throw I mean, some I, bones. That's, that's what I imagine. Right. <laughs> People gambling back to this shit. I've I, I've seen uh, Wolf of Wall Street, man. I, uh, I know what goes yeah, down. I plead the fifth. <laughs> I plead the fifth. Um, that's crazy. All right, so let's let's talk a little bit about your gaming. I, I see, obviously, Smite. Right is 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 one of the games. He what's what's yeah, your my, favorite game? That's my game, dude. I've been playing that since, dude. It's funny. I actually was introduced to it. Syndicate, did, pro syndicate, dude. Yes, yes. Yeah. So Tom did a stream, like a sponsored stream, like seven eight years ago. Yeah, and he was playing it. And I was like, dude, what is this? Like, I was kind of into Greek mythology at the time. Oh, he's, play, he's playing Zeus, and I'm like, dude, I've been wanting to get into mobas, but I hate the the top down like click to move. Same. So I'm like, well, I can't do that. And so this is like also a MOBA, but it's WASD. It's like third person MOBA. Yeah. So you're, you're a so keyboard like, player. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think like I, I jumped into it eight years later, dude. I'm, that's the one game I always come back to. Do you know it's anybody like that, there? That in Minecraft. At, at high res? Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Just making sure. Yeah. Like Scott Luzier, that's my boy. Hey, really? Yeah, that's right on, we man. go way back. So yeah. Yeah, anything, you need anything, you fucking, you let me know. I'll put, <laughs> put you in contact with him and he'll, yeah, he'll no, hook you the fuck dude, up. Dude, this my community has been amazing to me. Cool. Um, I, I know a lot of the streamers in the industry now. Awesome. Um, you know, they kind of help me out. Um, I've been kind of building my own community in that space, trying to. Obviously, I don't stream in season. Mm-hmm. Um, but as soon as the season's you over. You don't stream in season because it's not allowed or just because you I don't do, have I, time? I don't have time. Football I, and family. I don't. Like, that's the one thing. It's like week to week. I, I don't want to be in there getting bombarded with football stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's like I can't commit to times every single week. You know mm-hmm, what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's. I was like, well, why even try to half-ass it? Yeah. Uh, just leave it to the side. I'll do it after the season, and that'll kind of be my off-season thing. But 
I, I think that's why I can't get a damn Twitch partner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because they're like, dude, you don't stream for six months. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, I think it's becoming a little bit more automated, the the uh, approval process. Yeah. Unless you know somebody, obviously, what you do. Um, Try. Yeah, yeah to, to try and get that happen but aside from that it's like it's an automated thing you yeah. it's the same thing as like twitter uh verification where before we had we had connects now we don't no longer have those connects. Dude, so that, that was big so in college my freshman year um they had like some sort of connect because facebook's obviously out there and yeah but all that the tech startups and stuff in silicon valley um we had like people come in and be like hey if you want your twitter account like verified or your facebook account verified instagram all that stuff um just fill out this form like mm -hmm. we can we can get those for you that was before like verification was like a big like a big deal so like i've been verified since my freshman year of college and like that was when i had i don't know like 18, what's your 1800 same followers thing? maybe Bing um being a baller yeah being a baller yeah Bingham was my high school yeah that's my, gonna, that's my uh everybody like asks about that being a being a baller like Bingham was the high school I went to. Uh, I made it. I made it when I was, I mean, shoot, thirteen, fourteen, um, and so I just, I just kept it as like an ode to yeah, where yeah, I yeah. came from. I like the, I like that, man. <laughs> I mean, if 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 you think about like some of the most popular people out there, they all have like pretty weird games names as to how it goes. Uh, so you play Call of Duty, obviously Modern yeah. Warfare oh, Two. Yeah. So you, was, you was, do you still play Warzone or when you have a chance? Uh, a little bit, a yeah. little bit. I've kind of gone away from that with all the cheaters and the. Dude, some of the games get so sweaty. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, like I'm kind of kind of off of the Call of Duty train for a little bit um, so I can sink a little bit more time yeah. into it. Um, I mean, now with Tim coming back, or Tim basically signing with the Cowboys mm -hmm, in a way, mm -hmm. um, I got to get back in my war zone grind. You but. Do. <laughs> do. Do they give you that? Like obviously when when, when something like that happens, do they do, do, is, does an email blast go out to all the players and say, hey, no, no nothing like that? No, like, no, you, nothing, you, like, nothing like that. Um Obviously, I know some of the guys over at Complexity, so like they kind of let me know and were mm -hmm. talking to me about it. Which, um, yeah, dude, that was that was a hell of an acquisition for him. But, yeah. Um, Jason yeah. Jason Lake's gonna be here on the next podcast after yours, yeah. so it's gonna be cool. We haven't done with him dude, done awesome, one with man. him in since like two years, three years probably. Mm -hmm. uh, awesome. One of the first people, yeah, good people, man. Been a, have you been to Pluckers yet? To where? The wing spot, Pluckers. No, dude, he's a huge proponent of Pluckers. Pluckers. He took, he took me there one time, bro. Fire. Fan. Really? I'm not a big chicken guy. I was just arguing with somebody about chicken. Who was it? Oh, my uh the the current CEO or the CEO of Pine Park, this guy named Max Goldstein. We went to a taco place, he ordered chicken tacos. We went to uh like he just kept on ordering chicken. I'm like, man, yo, live a little, yo. Like get, get Al some pastor, baby. Al pastor. Thank you, some pork. <laughs> get something. Yeah. Tripe. It's it's uh it's it's one of those things, but pluckers. I'll I'll ask him pluckers about that. Bomb. I'll ask him about that. And it's like not just for chicken, bro. They have this uh, they have this like mac and cheese that they take and they fry it. Bro. Who doesn't like oh, fried God. anything? Like my inner fat boy comes out. Oh, every time bro, I don't get me started. My my current fat boy so would love good, something dude. like that. So good. All right, give me a second. Let me say hello to the sponsors really quickly, and we'll be right back. We have Upstart as the first uh, one. Uh, if you're carrying a credit card balance month after month, it can feel like a never-ending story. It can feel like quicksand. The more you do, the more you sink. Upstart can help you make that final payment so you can get ahead because so many Americans experienced financial hardship in the last year. Right? COVID did no favors to nobody. Right, so Upstart can help you regain your footing and get back to things and get them back on track. Upstart is the fast and easy way to pay off your debt with personal loan all online. Whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, over half a million people have used Upstart to get one fixed monthly payment. Unlike other lenders, Upstart considers your income and current employment to find you a smarter rate for your loan. With a five-minute online, online rate check, you can see your rate up front for loans between $1,000 and $50,000. You can receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. Find out how Upstart can help you Lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash eavesdrop. That is upstart.com eavesdrop, U-P-S-T-A-R-T dot com slash E-A-V-E-S-D-R-O-P. Don't forget to use the URL in the description down below and let them know that we sent you. Again, loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash eavesdrop. 
down below. Next, we have Purple Mattresses. I cannot tell you how happy I am with mine personally. And even before they started sponsoring the podcast, as I always say, we've been customers. Uh, That's because only Purple Mattresses have the grid. The one thing that I always brag about, the grid. It is a uniquely ventilated design that allows for air to flow through seamlessly to help you sleep cool even when it feels like a thousand degrees out no more flipping your pillow over it's literally there and the grid is amazingly supportive for your back and legs while cushioning your shoulders neck and hips no matter how you sleep i'm a side sleeper myself dalton you probably sleep never mind unlike memory foam which remembers everything the grid bounces back as you move and shift so you never get that I am stuck feeling when you do with memory foam, right? Uh, and right now, purple is pur- purple is comfort reinvented. And right now, you'll get ten percent off any order of two hundred dollars or more. Go to purple.com/slash hex. That's H three C Z, and use promo code hex H three C Z. That's purplemattress.com/slash hex. Promo code hex for ten percent off of any order of two hundred dollars or more. Purple.com/slash hex. That's H three C Z once again, and also use the promo code hex H three C Z. Terms apply, and the link will be in the description down. Down below. All right, we are moving on to ExpressVPN. What and how can I explain to you how important using a VPN is? It has saved us uh, a million times from getting swatted, a million times from getting kicked offline, a million times from happening something. I'm using the word million as uh, as, as in, you know, I'm, I'm hyping it up is what I'm trying to say, but it does happen, right? I know that most of you are probably thinking, why don't you just use incognito mode? Well, duh, incognito mode only goes so far. Let me tell you something. Incognito mode does not hide your activity. Uh Uh-uh. It does... It doesn't matter what mode you use, how many times you clear your browsing history, your internet service provider can still see every single website you've ever visited. That's why even when I'm at home, I never go online without using ExpressVPN. It doesn't matter who your internet provider is, ISPs in the US can legally sell your information uh, to ad companies. All that fine line print that you didn't read when you signed up for that thing, that's what they're talking about right here. ExpressVPN is an application that reroutes your internet connection through their secure servers uh, so your ISP can't be seen or they can't see the sites that you visit. Most of the time, I don't even realize that I have ExpressVPN on. It just runs seamlessly in the background. That's very true. Uh, And it's so easy to use. All you have to do is tap one button and you are protected. ExpressVPN is available on all of your devices, phones, computers, even your smart TVs, so there is no excuse for you not to use it. Right now, you can protect your online activity today with VPN rated number one by CNET. Visit my exclusive link, which will be in the description, ExpressVPN com slash h3cc three months for free on a one-year package that is exprssvpn.com slash h3cc expressvpn.com h3cc and the link will be in the description down below and then we have burrow burrow before we can get back to my man dalton schultz burrow burrow is a new company setting a new standard in furniture with easy to move modular designs timeless american mid-century and contemporary scandinavian styles and premium durable materials like responsibly forested hardwood top grain italian leather and reinforced metal hardware burrow's in-house design team takes a research-driven approach to make sure that their furniture fits your lifestyle which translates to things like simple mounting guide posters for their index wall shelves and a tool-free assembly process a modern shopping experience because burrow got rid of all the far or the far flung warehouse stores and high pressure showrooms and replaced them with a modern easy to use website where you get to create and customize your own furniture without leaving your house and guess what free shipping for everyone every single order no matter how big how small it is it is delivered directly to your door for free which can save you well over $100 in delivery fees when it comes to large items like a couch world class service Everyone needs a little help sometimes. I know I do. And the Burrow team is always available to lend a hand from custom orders to rescheduling a delivery. Right now, 
Okay, right now, if you go to burrow.com slash h3cc for $75 off burrow.com slash h3cc. Thanks again to Burrow for supporting the show. Thank you so much for the listeners for using and utilizing the service. Link will be in the description down below, but listeners can get $75 off their first order at burrow.com slash h3cc. That is B-U-R-R-O-W dot com slash h3cc for $75 off of Burrow. Link in the description. Don't pass up on this great opportunity. Go shopping without having to leave your house. Enjoy it. My man Dalton, back to you. And we are back. Thank you so much to the sponsors. Um, I got this helmet after you came in the first time because uh, I got it when Tyrone, Tyrone Crawford came to do mm-hmm. the podcast. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and since then, a bunch of Cowboys have come through these doors. I mean, the most legendary one for me is obviously Herschel Walker. Um, just because he's, you know, I'm, I'm a 90s Walker. dude, yeah. right? You know what I mean? Who who doesn't, you know? But we have Michael Gallup, Bryce Butler, Tyron Crawford, obviously, and then others. And then you, uh, as soon as this podcast is done. Um, but yeah, I've, I've been, I've been, uh, I've been a fan of football all my life, right? I play quarterback is my favorite position to play. Uh, You're a quarterback? Yeah. Did you play growing up? No, no, I never had the grades. Mm. Or or the athleticism. I don't know. I never tried out. I, was, I just I wasn't an athlete when I was younger I just, either. I just knew that every single time in in gym gym class where we were playing like football, tag football, flag football, I always play quarterback, and I was fucking my Chopping precision, dude. My precision, <laughs> the accuracy, uh, the accuracy, <laughs> pocket passer. Look, he's I a lo- pocket passer. Listen, I love me a little bit of me, and I like to talk about me. But when it comes to sports, I would lo- I-, I like to prove it. You know, like, it's a basketball. <laughs> basketball is my shit. I played every single sport yeah. except for. Uh, golf, unfortunately, because I and, and my friends try to get me to play golf for the longest time, and it was just one of those things where I just I just never even gave it a shot. So I finally got my own custom set of clubs. Uh-huh. Like finally, yeah, I dude, I'm six six. I've needed a custom set of clubs since like. It's six five here, yo. No, What's six, up? Six. I'm six six. Let's be real. I'm, I know. Don't, why yeah, are you robbing over the edge, dude? Come on, man. Yeah, well, yeah. I think it was like six oh five six, which means six eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Combine, which yeah, is yeah. like, dude. Should have done some stretching. Yeah, right. <laughs> Should have done some stretching to get those last two something two We're eights. Yeah. Um, but dude, I got my own set of clubs, and I was like stoked because finally I got a set that fits me. Yeah, I've been swinging on like a set of clubs that was made for somebody that was like five ten. Yeah, yeah, all my yeah. life. Some shorts, you know, all my life. You know what I mean? So yeah. I'm like, I'm like okay, and I go out there and I, I start ripping it. Like my first three shots are just felt clean, good, perfect. Yeah, and then we play we play around eighteen or around a nine, and dude, I am just chunking it. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm hitting like. I mean, at least eight inches before the ball is even going. And I'm mm. realizing it's because I'm, I'm, my swing has been like the same since I've been playing on with short clubs, and yeah. I'm dropping my back knee yeah. to get under it uh. because I'm the clubs have always been short. So now I'm swinging the same way, and I have to like relearn how to hit a damn golf ball. <laughs> yeah, well, me. So you're, gonna, you're gonna see me on the course once that PGA, right, dude. Once the me, PGA place gets finished. Yeah, let me up. know, man. My, my, my boys would would love to play. Um, and I said my boys, but like I th- I don't know how to fucking for, for the life of me. Bro, you're in, any, you're in good company. Yeah, any sport, <laughs> any sport. Like I I understand it and I'm good at it if I give it a shot. And for some reason, golf was just the one sport that I ne- never ever tennis, volleyball. I played it all. Pickleball, we tennis, won. Dude, tennis is very underrated. Yeah. Tennis is fun. As oh, well. yeah. Oh, yeah. Tiring. Tyrant. No, completely tiring. Like Tiring. Yes. I was like, oh, tiring. God, I was dude. thinking of like the... the tiring just busted yeah. the wall. It's like the Kool-Aid. Like, hey, Kool-Aid. Yeah. <laughs> For real, man. Um, all right. So, eSports, what, which ones do you follow? Like, what what uh, do you watch? Like, what uh, do you obviously, watch? I'm, I'm super into COD. Like, I watch those boys every time I get the the chance. Mm-hmm. I grew up on that. Like, Black Ops 2 was, like, who was the your, pinnacle who, of mine. Who did you watch the most growing up? Us? Optic? Yeah, no question. Okay. Well, um, Nate Chat, obviously, yes. from the beginning. All awesome. Scump, everyone. Everybody. That's fucking sick, dude. Um, I, and that never gets old. Like, I don't know if it's imposter syndrome or I don't know if it's just me, like, just being in it for so long that I'm still surprised that when people say, yeah, we watched it. And I don't know how it affects me or if it – but when you say it, I'm like – yeah, that's a believable thing. But no, like, I, I, dude, I grew up on all that stuff. Um, my group of friends that we still all game together, like, we all grew up Optic fans. Mm-hmm. We, we're still Optic fans. Um, I grew up watching all the vlogs, all the sixty fifty videos, Woo! dude. Like one two three five Macau, like all that. All shit. of them, I, dude. Hell I was yeah! 
So it's like I grew up watching all that stuff, and now I'm here. Let me ask you a question. Bro, I'm telling you, like 13 year old me would be screaming. That. <laughs> <laughs> That's screaming. crazy. Yo, let me ask you this then: What is one thing that you've always wanted to know about the days of 6050? Is there is there a video or is there a story that you have in like the back of your head where it's like, if I, I'm like, I wonder what fucking happened there. Bro, I, I was I was just happy that like you guys came out. And we're like, yeah, bro, we were. Like some of the old sixty fifty videos, smoking. yeah, we were smoking. I'm like, yeah. okay, I'm like, there it is. <laughs> yeah, well, we're we're we're, we're we were regular, yeah. with college age dudes. You know what I mean? From northwest suburbs. You know, we're not, we weren't hype beasts. Well, actually, I guess we were because we were in the. It doesn't neither here or there. The the thing with that is that with what we do came a responsibility to make sure that we were no, always dude, the right thing on camera. Your talent, dude. I completely understand that. Yeah. Because that is where I'm at right now. <laughs> so I, that's all I'll say on that. <laughs> yeah. And, and some people are like, um, uh, okay, so first I'm going to tell you the worst thing about launching a cannabis business is that every picture that you take, you're always going to be told that you're stoned. Like the amount of people that said that on the pictures that I just took on the on the meet and greet, mm -hmm. like I, I don't smoke until uh, very rarely, and I mean rarely, do I smoke in the morning. It's always after 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. it, that's my wind down, right? That's that I don't. I don't do it throughout the day. That's just not my thing, right? It's just I just not that I can't function or operate. It's just not my thing. Mm -hmm. um, so for us, it was it was like, you know, it, it's it's a responsibility thing, right? And like a lot of them, like like Seth doesn't hasn't smoked in call it five years, right? Like Nate shot seven years. Like they, this is not something that they do anymore. Mm -hmm. So for them to sort of admit that they did at one point was sort of brave but at the same time was like why not be open about that right, right. uh yeah. it, it shouldn't be okay for people to glorify the fact that they're getting fucked up on whiskey or old fashions or whatever red you know our red bulls and vodkas or whatever uh because those are those are harmful right you mm -hmm. know what i mean like i've i've tried to play call of duty when i've come home from the club super drunk i'm talking like call of duty 2 2004 impossible, impossible. close one eye impossible yeah. <laughs> you cannot operate when you're stoned it's a completely different story i know that my art has become i've i've leap bound my my abilities and what i've learned as an artist from a drawing perspective since i started mm -hmm. Again, because I quit for a very long time because of whatever reason. I was a I was I was a corporate dude in Illinois and all this stuff. You know what I mean? So that's cool. So no no other questions. Nothing that you saw like dude, why mean, did this guy get dropped? Or I mean, how the did X, feel? dude, all the X files like the hex files that, that that will never like I will never see those. But I'll dude, show I'm you always. I'll show you. Uh, I'm gonna take a break right now. I'm gonna show you the fight between Nate Shot and Scump right now. This is not, like the only people that I've seen this is people who have worked. Bro. and work at optic and i always bring it up and they always like laugh and i'm like yo when can i post this they're like they're like no you can't post that ever, ever. yeah but it's uh funny here we go <laughs> that's and that's not even it right um you, you clip you cut that yeah well the cut thing is is like it, it went on for so long it, it started in the morning and it went out through a, throughout the entire day and it culminated at around like 6 p.m. when Scum punched a hole through a door and like they separated themselves. And then I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh man, how are we gonna make it back from this? How do I bring team cohesion back? They're eating together like like nothing. And I'm like, okay, good. They're normal dudes. You Brothers. know what I'm saying? Normal I mean, it's dudes. Like, it's yeah. like a brother thing, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Sibling. Um, so anyway, aside from that, anything, anything else? I, I always ask, I should ask ple people from here on out, that you know that that have had questions about it because I you know now that it's been like 10 12 years like mm -hmm. it's easier to talk about but you know why why this doesn't get released is just a I don't know I think that maybe on the 20th year anniversary I always have these like videos and I'm like oh no that's a 10 year anniversary drop Bro, bring everybody back and do like a reaction like, that would be a that. good reaction video yeah you know what I mean like yeah. get everybody around a couch and just like pull up some moments and like yeah it, but... like a reminiscent type I but mean, yeah, but see, like that specifically would be going against what I envisioned Optic to be, right? Like if we from the beginning, like how big do you think this video would? How well do you think this video would have done if we uploaded that video way back then? And would that, you know, spike in viewership would have helped us become larger than we were at the time? And little by little, you sort of start to rely on drama or like controversial shit to grow your audience, and that's unfortunately what. That's thrives the day that we live in dude. Yeah. that's like i mean you see it like i i'm in the nfl dude like 
that's literally what we deal with every day. Yeah. Somebody, somebody on talk shows or something saying something that's egregious yeah. just to try to stir something up, to get clicks, to get views, to drive people to go watch mm-hmm. whatever they, whatever crazy shit they just said. And that's, that's just the day and age that we're in, man. The one, the one that, that, that weirded me out was this morning when I saw that, cause I saw that Valkyrie Ray launch her, her, uh, her SPF. About UV protecting uh, makeup line. Well, it's not even a makeup line, right? It's like a. It's a yeah, it's a blue light. It was marketed as a fucking blue light, right? There's 100,000 millions of rays of blue light that comes on a sunny day, more than any TV or tablet or whatever. But it's still SPF. It's sun protected. It protects your skin. The amount of people that had a fucking problem with that. When I saw that she made that announcement. Uh, I saw it and I'm like, oh, good for her. She's she's mm-hmm. you know venturing out. out. Yeah, she's ven- venturing out into other stuff. And I moved on. I thought it was makeup. Apparently, it's not makeup. It's like an it's like lotion. It's like an SPF thing. Am I saying mm-hmm. SPF sun sun protective? Yeah. yeah, whatever. And I'm like, oh, that's good. You know, the sun is harmful. Like you do melanoma, it's a fucking thing. You mm-hmm. know, so the 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 fact that I guess they geared it towards gamers or whatever. But she's a gamer. Uh, long story short, bro, it's that I saw it and I moved on. It's not for me. I right. moved on. I thought to myself, good for her. And I moved on. But the amount of people that are choosing to focus on why that's bad. Some some dude says that she was selling snake oil. Don't fucking buy this. You have a choice to not buy it. The people, like, even if, if, if people thought that she was maybe taking advantage of uh, impressionable kids... It's still not something that like it's it's if you go swimming and you put this on like it, it'll help. You know what I mean? Mm. And I just could not believe that in this day and age, people are still like not minding their own fucking business. Everybody has a fucking opinion about everything. And that to me is like one of the biggest tragedies ever. People are more concerned about judging people who are doing stuff instead of them doing something so they can understand how fucking hard it is. To That's do. the problem with anonymous non enemy yeah. on anonymous. Am I saying that right? Anonymity. I'm, I'm, yes. Anonym, anonymity. 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 When you said <laughs> on it, the internet, I, I know what you meant. <laughs> I fucked it up every no, time, bro. Anonymity. Yeah. yeah. When you said it wrong, I knew what you meant, so I was like, "Yeah, I get it." But then when you corrected yourself, I'm like, "What? How do you fucking say it?" <laughs> anonymity. That's yeah, yeah. That's the, the issue you're going to yeah. run into. That's just that's that's what the platform it comes with it. Earlier today, my friend Omens, fame, world famous graffiti writer, one of my best friends in the world. He was he's here. He's hanging out, and we were driving, and some dude recognized uh, recognized because we went to Academy to go buy your jersey, mm-hmm. and then we went somewhere else. But some dude's like, dun, dun, honked at us. I was like, yo, I said hello. He's like, do you get that a lot? I was like, yeah. And like, pe- that doesn't wig you out. And I was like, nah, why? He's like, I don't know. I was like, people just know you. I'm like, man, I'm 41 years old. You know what I mean? I'm I'm from the '90s. Like people know that words have consequences in my world. You know what I mean? So I choose to live a life of respect. Respect yeah. everyone. Uh, you know, obviously, if they're harming other people, then I have an opinion. If I don't, not in my fucking business. I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm just not. The, Matt, when was the last time I asked you how your family was doing? Never. It's just not my not my business. You know what I mean? <laughs> if, if he chooses to tell me, then I'll then I'll gladly you know take the time to listen to it. But I'm not. You know what I mean? Like I uh-huh. I, I I just. There's too many people to take care of in my world already. You know what I mean? So for me to nitpick or, or go that granular into people's lives is just not something that that will service them or me in any in any way. So choosing to respect to my own business and to not have an opinion about something. Like even this morning when I tried to, I was going to defend her. I was going to tweet out something defending Valkyrie, but I'm like, you know what? It's not in my fucking business. Mm-hmm. It's not in my business. And I just chose not to. I just left right. it. I asked uh, somebody. I'm like, I'm like, she's starting a new business. What's what's the big deal? Yeah. And but but even then, I, I regretted asking that question because it's not in my business. It does not include Hector. So that that's something that's I've kind of changed. Is it, it changes as you get older because you start to understand mm-hmm. more. Um, but like when you're in an organization, and I was a sports fan growing mm-hmm. up, I, I know how it is. Mm-hmm. It's like your team loses, you're pissed off. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like you don't know what's going on in the building behind those closed doors you don't know you don't know the the oper- the day-to-day operations of of what's actually happening yeah. behind the scenes exactly and that is that can be so dramatically drastically different than any narrative that you're going to find in the public mm-hmm. um and really the only people that truly understand the situation and what's going on are those people that are in there every day doing that um so obviously i i know that now having been a part of this organization for three years and yeah. it's like 
you see that. And so it's like, I, I see myself reserving those kinds of judgments. It's like, well, you know, oh, well, X did this and this is what's happening there. And I'm like, okay, like maybe, but you know, it, it could also not be that way. Like, is it, is it really like, and it's yeah. like, I have, I have friends or that are in different, you know, whether they're in business or, you know, other, other teams or, or doing some other venture in, in a different part of the world, th- that's always like carry true. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's important to understand that not everything of what you see or what you read is necessarily exactly what's happening. Yeah. And people want to get to get you to believe their narrative because it obviously, gain, obviously gains more traction and yeah. the views, all that stuff, same thing comes into play, but it's like, it's like watching film. It's never as good or as bad as it mm, seems. As you remember it being. Yes. Yeah. And so it, there's, it's always, it, it's more complicated than that. And so it's like, you, you could be commenting on some shit that just doesn't even, doesn't even matter. Like mm-hmm. that's not even a, it's not even true. That's not even a part of the the real story of what's happening. So I think it's, uh, I think as more people grow up and as those Twitter warriors and keyboard warriors grow up, that'll hopefully change, but that's always going to be a, a problem. I just wish the common sense was what we all more common. Yeah. <laughs> I just like, come on, yeah. man. Like, come on. Let's, let's, let, we're all human. Yeah. We're all going to make mistakes. Some mistakes are unforgivable, sure, but the majority of them are like okay to say, you know what, I fucked up, man. It's like fuck it. What what's? Let's fix it instead of argue over it. And 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 most of the time, it's 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 just it's just people who one have never built something or are in the and and I've done a re, I'm I'm still working on this part, but I've I've been doing a really good job of understanding the fact that they like you just said have limited knowledge of the actual situation right and if they would just wait a second or uh, or however long it took for somebody or all of everything to, to come out that'd be a thing mm-hmm. one of the main things like it just happened to me recently right like there was an article that came out that had like 90 percent of the shit that was said there was not true right I, I, I it could have been seen as a hit piece on me but i was just you know what the green wall understands like they they know right like they know that the, the special like they know that there's if there's something to tell I, I'll tell them, but the fact that this dude never even reached out right and say yo this is what I'm I'm writing just so you know like is this true, if I say no comment then obviously no comment on that he said no comment is this true like no chance at all to to sort of even defend myself to him as a person that that, that has known him for a long time, mm-hmm. so I'm just like you know what it is it is what it is like he it, it's. It's what it is, and I, I make make a big deal out of it. I just chose to remove that person from my life just because, um, but it, but it did hurt a little bit, right? Because I've known this person for a long time. I've always gone out of my way to say hello to him. I've always gone out of my way to to make sure that he felt included and, and all this shit. And then to see something like that come out without any any outreach to me to say is like, yo, you know, some you know, this is this is what I'm gonna say. I was just like completely mind blown, right? Because it was like. I was like, you know what? I'm not even gonna defend myself. It's not true. I'm not gonna defend myself. I'll, right. Just something that I've always don't give it the energy, man. Mm. So I heard that you have a Dave Chappelle story. Did you did you watch his latest <laughs> comedy show? I did not. I uh, haven't seen it yet, but uh, I know he's a he's a hot name in the news. Right he's now. a hot name in the news. Netflix uh, CEO is like apparently addressing the the walkout. Um, you know, I I I personally I've watched the show. I don't I don't want to have an opinion on it because I know that the that what people are feeling that are offended by it are real feelings. Mm-hmm. Therefore, it should be addressed properly and, and, and people should take the, the time to sort of go through that. But there are instances in which I thought I'm like, man, you know what? Common sense would do it. And, and look, people have made fun of Mexicans for the entirety of my com- com- comedians. Right. I've never been like fucking, you know what I mean? Like like boycott this shit. Right. Like in. And to me, it's like I I don't want to have an opinion because I, I I don't just I know that their feelings are true. So I I'm gonna let them handle their own business the way that they feel is the right way to approach it. Mm-hmm. But you know, again, uh, I'm gonna mind my own business. Right. You know what <laughs> More I mean? More people need to take yeah. that advice for sure. Um, but uh, you yeah, had a Chappelle yes, story. Yes, I was. Uh, so I was at the Conor McGregor fight this summer. Okay. Um, in Vegas, like UFC fight, him and a uh, cowboy Cerrone. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they were they were at their fight and everything, and so I'm I'm like mid tier, like you know maybe third or probably about thirty rows up, mm-hmm. sitting like in the stands, in the yeah, bleachers, like a regular dude. Yeah. And then my buddy calls me up, and he's he's sitting down there in second row, like waving a ticket. He's like. 
bro, I got an extra ticket. Like, yeah. come down there. Yeah. Bro, Who are you so, with? Um, some of the uh, some guys I played with in college. Okay. If yeah. you said my wife, I would have been like, oh, yeah, you can't leave. But if it's anyone <laughs> else, <laughs> I'm fucking out. Literally. And he, yeah. And so, he, oh, so, uh, so I'm sitting second row. Um, the whole fight. Insane. Like, I've never sat ringside, seen ring, ringside action. Um, and so I get down there, and people are kind of coming in as it's getting closer to the fight. And I look behind me, and dude, it's it's Kit Harrington. Uh huh. It's the fucking king of the north. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. him, the writers, yeah, yeah. like all the Game of Thrones guys are like right there. I'm like, dude, what's going on? <laughs> like big fan. Yeah. And like I'm Did sitting you there. Tell try- them like football player for the Cowboys. No, <laughs> they probably thought I'm just some some fucking slap dick. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like I, that, that you should have represented. Yeah, like, I, mean, so I mean, that's also like Let not me. me. This. Do you wear your jersey out? No, God, no. If, if I was dude, a pro is, player, that is not me, man. Like, if I was a pro player <laughs> in anything, right, Call of Duty or anything, I would always wear my jersey. I would always be repping. You know what? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So, anyway, like, long story short, bro, there is like stars left and right. Chuck Liddell is sitting right, like, right behind me. So, anyway, it's getting, it's getting closer to the fight, and like, we're second row, and these guys are walking out of the tunnel, like, right to the right of us, and you know where they do their, they put the little Vaseline yeah, 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 on and everything. Yeah, yeah. That's literally like right in front of us. So if, if I sit back here, it's literally as close to me to you, like it's yeah. that it, you are right in it. Yeah, and so. The front row in front Fuck. of us are it's it's empty like nobody's been there nobody showed up and I'm like dude we're gonna get like unobstructed everything well as soon as the fight starts you know getting ready for like the actual main event people are starting to shovel in and freaking two chains walks in sits down like literally right in front of me like with his entourage and then right after two chains comes in fucking Dave Chappelle. And I'm like, everybody knows Dave Chappelle. I mean, I'm a big of fan of Dave Chappelle. Yeah. Like, he's I could have picked two chains out of a lineup. Bro. So Dave Chappelle walks in. You know, he's got his, he's got like a badass, you know, little fucking get up on. He's got dark ass sunglasses. I'm like, I don't know how he's seeing. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. But it's like, it's one of those moments where you're like, okay, act like you've been here. Act like you've been here. You you know, you're, you're an NFL player. Like you can't, mm-hmm, you can't mm-hmm. lose your shit. You know, it's, it's Dave Chappelle. Yeah. But relax, bro. You've been here before. I have fucking not been there before. Yeah, 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 <laughs> so yeah, yeah. it's like, you know, in my inner, the inside, I'm like freaking out. I'm like, dude, this is epic. Like, this is about to be a night. You know, I got a couple drinks in me. So I'm like, okay, this is sweet. You know, Dave Chappelle is going around introducing him to everybody. Like, hey, what's up, man? Good to see you. Good to see you. Um, and he looks back and he looks back at me. And he, he's like, he does one of these. He's like, what's up, man? It's good to see you. And he throws his hand out there. And I mean, bro, time stops. You know what I mean? It's like one of those moments. My, I'm stopped right now. You know, I'm a, let me just preface this. Like, you know, I'm a white guy. So I'm like, no. I'm, try, I'm trying not to fuck this up. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's a big, oh, the it's, handshake. Bro, it's a big moment. Yeah. It's a big moment for me. You know what I mean? So it's like, I gotta, I gotta do this for the brand. You know what I mean? So he puts his hand out and I go to, I go to dab him up and he does one of these and he, he takes it low. Motherfucker, he's he's trying to dab up fucking the king of the north right yeah, behind me. Yeah. <laughs> and here I am looking like a slappy. Uh, <laughs> so, dude, one of the most embarrassing like yeah. moments of my life. Completely just not even going for me. I'm like, ah, I do one of those and I keep it in. I get to the side as Kit Harrington is saying what's up to <laughs> Dave Chappelle. Yeah. And I'm standing there just like, you know, time really stops then. I'm like, oh yeah. God. Oh no! I'm gonna be in the next fucking comedy special. Yeah, like, he's gonna. Say, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like did he all up? time low. Yeah, and that's he didn't <laughs> shake says, says us up to Kit. Like five minutes later goes by. He he goes, "Hey man, I'm mean to do you like that, bro?" Yeah, I yeah, say, yeah, hey, yeah. Good to see you, man. I'm yeah, like, yeah. So it's yeah, like yeah. I, I got the handshake, that's but awesome. I'm like, that's awesome. I'm like, bro, I, you know that moment. Yeah, of course. I felt it just oh, now. I God. felt it just now. Matt, dude, did you feel it? Matt felt it, it. it. Dude, it still hurts. Man. Yeah, it still hurts. But well, hey, but I dabbed up Dave. Yeah, you t- he yeah, made up for it. He came back. He, <laughs> felt, was, you know, he came back and he felt better. But yeah, man. You, I, I don't want to know how to act uh, like that. I don't. I don't. Dude, I don't I know how trying. to act with someone like that. I was, dude. I was trying. I was like, literally, I was in my head the whole time, just like, okay, bro, you've been here. Like, yeah. Don't matter. Like, you're, you're second row. Come on, dude. Yeah, Compose yeah, yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm sitting there laughing, having a great time, I'm talking to the dudes that I'm with, trying to, trying to be cool, trying to act like. <laughs> I wouldn't know how, how to act if Dave Chappelle 
was like, I mean, I, I wouldn't. Have. It's just, you know, I, I act like I've been there for sure. But inside, I would have been oh. fucking free. I've been watching this yeah. dude forever. Yes. Right? So I'm pretty sure you're the yeah. same. Two, two I was, for forty mil, man. <laughs> I was I was even mad when he was in Doctor Doolittle and he came out as the as the comedian that that uh, that Eddie Murphy was making fun of. Mm. Like I didn't like that role for him. Mm-mm. It was beneath him to play that role, yes. even back then. <laughs> right? I, I'm just saying as as, as yep. his fan, I'm sure that he loved it, whatever, or maybe he didn't love it, whatever. All I know is that I didn't like that movie because they made Dave Chappelle look like something that he wasn't. And I know that he would have never played that fucking role if he wasn't on the fucking come up. You know what I mean? That's right. how much I like Dave Chappelle. You know, I, man, I don't even dude. watch Dr. Doolittle. <laughs> and I love Eddie Murphy. You yeah. know what I mean? So, I don't know. That's yeah, awesome. That's like my most embarrassing story. <laughs> and it happened to have Dave Chappelle. <laughs> but Dave Chappelle. you got to understand, like, Dave Chappelle is the best comedy person the the best comedian that's ever lived oh. period when Unreal. when everybody that is somebody that you watch and admire says that about him you know that it's true you know that it's it's uh it's it's the real deal it's like the name your most recognizable top comedians in the world like dave Chappelle's at the top of the list yeah and anybody you ask yeah. if you like comedy if you listen ricky gervais second, second listen to for me anything yeah. like Franco Escamilla, number three <laughs> yeah He's carlos Vallarta, another mexican comedian fucking super funny one of my favorites um, there's, 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 uh, there's benefits aside from the traditional day-to-day operations in which being bilingual is awesome. Comedy is the end music maybe, but comedy is definitely oh, it's huge. one of the most. Yeah. B- sure. Getting to experience comedy in two lang- languages is the best thing ever. Dude. So we have a international, we, we have like a international player. I don't know if you've heard it. Isaac Alarcon. Mm-hmm. Dude, he's the man, mm-hmm. and he's like Where's literally, he from? literally from. Uh, oh God, I'm gonna mess it up. No, don't mess it up. Um, he's from Mexico. The okay. city that he's from, oh, right here, uh, Alarcon Cowboys. Isaac Alarcon yes. is uh, offensive lineman. Uh, I, I forget what city he's from. Kind of Dude, division, there's a people out there. he's hilarious. Yeah, freaking hilarious. Like speaks English. Yeah, English and fluently? Spanish. Like fluent. Yes, cool. Monterrey. Dude. Monterrey. Yeah. Yes. Dude. Yeah. One of my favorite guys that we've ever had come through. One of my like the my favorite players <laughs> that's ever like that Hell I've yeah. ever played with. It's a big dude, dude he, huh? Dude, he's a six seven, three uh, three twenty. Bro, you don't understand. This guy this guy Dalton makes me weighs. look small. Two fifty. Two fifty? Yeah. That's bro, we have bro, so much in makes... common. <laughs> <laughs> You're six six two? No, no. I'm, I'm six even two fifty. No, I'm kidding. Come on, you can six six. Two fifty. I wonder how two fifty would look on me. Probably not good. Probably not good. I wouldn't carry that that well. I'm yeah, at I'm either. at two I'm at two twelve right now and I'm just like, dude, get the fuck on get go walking. You know what I mean? Go do bro, something. We played a we played a nose tackle the other week. Uh he was three forty. Three forty. Yeah. 340 um how is that even a human a beast like a monolith like, yeah. <laughs> the guy is just massive yeah yeah, yeah. And our coach was like yeah he's light mm. <laughs> well he's gotta say something for you to like not go in there like you have you to know, go in there he, confidently you know, he's light, you know a couple biscuits away from what's, what's <laughs> 360 the har- what's the hardest you've ever been hit hardest that i ever been hit and and you had, i mean like the fact that you don't remember oh. it that means that you haven't been hit hard yet uh, no dude i've definitely because i can tell you all of mine definitely been hit hard um in practice for sure um in a game oh just dude, in general dude in, it, bro, oh, yeah, in, in, a, in a game yeah we played atlanta last year yep like i had a I had a great game but bro we ran like a tight end screen and i was like trying to find my way through the hole and i i'm looking to my left and i'm like okay i should cut to my right and as soon as I like look to the right, dude, their linebacker sitting right there, just cold cocked me. Bah. Oh my god, dude! Like that—that that was my first like NFL hit where I'm like, okay, like, yeah, that's this is the big. This leagues. is this, I, dude. I fucking I fumbled. Yeah. <laughs> like terrible, terrible play for yeah. the boy. Yeah, but yeah. like that—that that was one of the hardest. Hardest play ever I bet you got shit for that too, but they oh. don't understand the milliseconds that it takes for you to light. Bro, you out. you go get hit. <laughs> like, yeah. I want to I want to see your classic like Twitter warrior. Yeah, suit up in full pads and just. Go, the go, the go thing run. is this: it's like, well, I'm not fucking you know. Go, six, go get go get I, hit against a practice squad linebacker. Well, like, not even that. Just, let's let's say this. Let's say the the Twitter dweeb is um I don't know five six and weighs one thirty. Let's put another five sixer that weighs one thirty and let him get hit. 
it, it, it's all relative, sure. And it's obviously, you know, your size, you can take that sort of hit. But if he was to take, if I was to take a hit from somebody that knows how to fucking, you know, tackle, like, it's going to hurt. It's not it's not as, as easy. You, you know what I found? Well, this is the thing. Since I started in this gaming stuff, since I started in optic and competition and people have criticized and not criticized and loved and not loved and, like, I've, I've stopped talking shit to my bears. I stopped talking shit to the bulls. I stopped talking shit. I, I don't talk shit to pros ever. I don't even... Nope. I just don't do it because I like when they make like bad decisions like the Bears. Why don't the Bears? <laughs> what don't why, go. Yeah, why <laughs> don't the up. Bears? Why haven't you know what? Why? Why don't we have a good quarterback? Why haven't we had a good quarterback in the last 30 fucking years? Your accent's coming out. Yeah, is it? Yeah, it's because I'm mad. Okay, why isn't it? Why haven't we? Like, I don't ask those questions anymore. All my friends do and they, they criticize and, and all this shit. But I'm just like, you know what? The back office knows what they're sit, doing. Let me sip my coffee. Bro. I just don't know what they're doing. So <laughs> the fact that I'm operating on limited knowledge is going to make me mind my own business yet again. Anyway, Dalton, any closing comments? No, nah, man. That's it. Come check me out on Twitch. Um, if you guys want to want to see that, yep. uh, my Twitch username is Schultzen. It's my last name with an N. Yep. I think I got. I, I think I have to spell it with an E N actually. So I don't it's know. Schultz E N. Uh huh. Um, but yeah, off I, I, stream, I stream in the off seasons. That's off what seasons. I do. All right. Well, how about, how about you come by at the end of the season so we can plug that again? Let's play Hook some Call up, of Duty bro. this upcoming season. Hook me up. I'm in. Uh, and uh, I can't, I, man, I, I can't wait to, to continue to see you kicking ass, bro, because you have been Appreciate super it, happy. Proud to know you. Obviously, uh, b- big fan. Obviously, I was fucking cheering, posting you on, on Insta. I said, that's my boy and shit. Let's go. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for stopping by. Appreciate it, bro. I'm not going to miss your hand. That's a big cowboy (laughs) hand right there. We'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.